welcome back, friends. Uh, End Time Church, Pastor Christopher Manti is me, and you are you, and I praise God for that, <clears throat> the you part. Uh, no, we're here as a family, right? Uh, welcome in, friends. Uh, End Time Church, as always, Monday night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time, thereabouts, is live. And uh, I say hello to you in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, and Maranatha, indeed, come Lord Jesus, right? That is what we are passionate uh, about here. And so uh, we welcome you one and all. It won't be a whole lot of uh, intros or announcements today other than um, our app is awesome. <laughs> right? Uh, please go and get it. There's a link to it right in the description. Um, you can, or just type in app.endtime.church from your phone, from your tablet, from your computer, desktop, laptop, whatever you've got. That'll take you directly to uh, the app for your device specifically. So it's super cool. Uh, get it, use it, utilize it. A lot of folks um, have, you know, signed up and then never came back, never went to it, never used it. Like, that's oh, that's silly. Uh, utilize it. It's totally uh, free to get and to use. Not a not an issue there at all, but it's not free for us to create and to host and to uh, pay folks to do that and to keep it awesome. Uh, so we are in the midst of that. I would ask you this, and I'll post the link here in a minute. Um, if you have not contributed to the app, because the bill has come in and we still need $1,500, um, if you have not, have not given to the app yet, would you consider, please, $5 tonight? Or today, whenever you're watching this, actually, I have a sister from Australia checking in. Uh, Stephanie says it's morning there, so God bless you. Uh, wherever you are and whenever you are seeing this, even if it's Tuesday or next week or whatever, give $5 towards the app. Um, be very, very helpful, and uh, that way we can chip away little by little, and if everyone who has it does that, we're good to go. Period, the end. Okay, so I'll post that uh, link here in just a minute. Um, so be on the lookout for that. You can also sign up for text alerts and go to Telegram, the app that uh, a lot of folks use to keep it private. And I've got a Bible study on there. Just uh, type in end time Bible study on Telegram and it'll show up. And so use the app and use these things. Share, share this right now with all your friends and networks. That's the one thing we can't, um, you know, this thing is never going to expand beyond uh, what it is if we keep it to ourselves. So just share it. Social media is the most powerful tool that we have that's ever been for sharing with uh, folks, even those who maybe don't even know us that well in another part of the world or some we haven't connected with for years and years and years. All of a sudden we'll see something. Trust me, it happens, right? You've seen it probably in your life as well. Uh, so just throw it out there. Put it out there. Say, hey, come on over. If you have no church home, we are your church home. Not a problem. Love to do it. Love to serve. Uh, we'd love to serve Jesus here and teach the word of God and uh, witness and be disciples, disciple makers, all that stuff. So get the app, use the app, give tonight, uh, share this right now. And if you're on the website called endtime.church, you're super cool and special to me uh, because it's a great tool as well. You can chat right directly. We've got a whole bunch of folks on here, amazing brothers like David and Isaac, Mark, Matt. Bless the Lord. Awesome people. Um, say hello to them. Let, let us know who you are, where you are from, um, what your calling is, what your interest is, um, any prayer requests you have. There's a form right on our site, endtime.church. Just hit the prayer tab, the button that says prayer, and you can fill that out and submit it immediately. We uh, Leadership here will get it and pray immediately. When I see them, I just pray right then and there. Um or if it's just a contact or you need something, you know, you wanted to reach out in whatever way to say, hey, I was here and it was great. Send the form. Uh, and then there's a playlist button as well that has our previous messages all the way back to May the 10th. So last three months plus um, of messages from myself and Christopher Anderson. Wonderful uh, Pastor Anderson as well. Okay. Um, I think that's all I've got as far as announcements. Let's worship the Lord here. Um, the amazing uh Tara Randall Soros uh, is going to serenade us to the throne of God. So let's do that. And then we'll get right into the 
topic tonight, which is Daniel chapter 4, the seven-year beast. Yes, indeed.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are worthy. You are good. And uh, I praise you for being strong when we are weak. And even those who are ministering in this 
expression of your church and your body here at ETC. Encourage, bless, heal, deliver, pour grace, more, more grace, Father. For these things we need to overcome, for the, the afflictions that we might have, for any attack from the demonic we might be experiencing or our families are experiencing. We take the authority that you've given us, Lord Jesus, and ask in your will that it be stopped. But if it won't, and like Paul, if we are meant to experience these things for your purposes, and so be it, and let us be thankful even in that. We ask that in Yeshua, Jesus' perfect name. Amen. Indeed, thank you for uh, serving um, those of you who are here at ETC and even giving of your time right now. <clears throat> you could be doing something different. You could be relaxing with your family. Uh, I saw Sonia's multitasking as she's watching, so that's a great, great testimony to uh, the spirit moving this whole gathering tonight. So praise him for that. Okay, let's get into it. Daniel chapter 4. So we've been doing the entire book of Daniel, uh, verse by verse, the past four weeks now. Uh, If you've missed any of them, please just go to the playlist button on the endtime.church site. uh, And you can see them there. Of course, it's always on our YouTube channel and Facebook as well. But who knows with those guys, um, day to day, what's going to happen, what's going to be removed and censored and whatnot. So uh, go to our uh, page for that and uh, and get the app, and you'll always have access to any of that. Anyway, so now we're on chapter four. Uh, and so up to this point, we've seen some very interesting things, haven't we? Uh, in terms of not just it's a very interesting book, and this is a really cool v- visions and dreams, and Daniel and his friends have really gone through some stuff. It makes for some good reading, um, but that there's absolute application. In fact, you could say that's the intention of God revealing what he did to Daniel uh, and the talent and the the giftings that he had in his lifetime uh, were very much for not of his lifetime and for uh, the use of the wise virgins or the masculine uh, at the end of the age. Uh, Maybe that's as, who was it said, prospective masculine? Was that Christian? Yes, Brother Christian. Uh, dear friend um, who's joining us tonight, bless him as well. Um, <clears throat> that's exactly the point, right? And we we t- talked about that in the first chapter and the fact that the wise virgins have to know, and it's our primary mission to be informed and become wise. Become wise. Why is it some, wisdom is something you, you obtain, you gather, you buy. Um, in other words, God just doesn't plop it on you. You know, revelation just doesn't, occurred there's you have to mine it out of the word of god okay uh and then in chapter two of course we saw the image the image very much in the end time scenario right there's an image uh coming called the image of the beast and we have some real parallels there and then last week we saw uh where daniel's friends went into the fire and indeed we are going to suffer that fires of affliction uh, but don't think it strange that these things would happen to you because it's happened before. Um, and again, great uh, application for the uh, end of the age, <clears throat> not just Daniel's day. And so we're going to get now into chapter number four. So let's hit it. And uh, we're calling this one the seven-year beast. You say, what? <clears throat> I thought in there, is it? Well, let's check it out. All right, we're going to bring up the text. We'll follow along. There we are. All right. Let's go. Nebuchadnezzar. The, oh, by the way, uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or what have you, go ahead and ask them or save them to the end. We'll address them before we leave the air, Okay. Not not a problem. <clears throat> Chapter 4 of the book of Daniel says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king. So he's writing it. 
Interesting, right? By the way, just so we remember, way back in chapter 2, we have a switch in language from Hebrew to the Aramaic or the Chaldean language even, you could say, the Babylonian version. Um, the Gentiles would understand. Uh, and that continues all the way through the end of chapter 6. So we're in that period now. So Nebuchadnezzar himself is writing in Aramaic. Nebuchadnezzar the king, to all peoples, nations, languages that dwell in all the earth. Wow. Isn't that a phrase? Peace be multiplied to you. In all the earth, is King Nebuchadnezzar writing to China? Or America? Or Africa? I mean, South Africa? Right? You, you, Europe? Catch my drift? Um, just keep that in your Black burner there for a second. Uh, Peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High God has worked for me. He's testifying right now, right? Remember chapter 2 and 3 and 1, basically. He's seen uh, what God can do through Daniel and his companions. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion is from generation to generation. This is chapter 2, right? The vision of the statue, the interpretation, or the dream of it, the interpretation, the fact that Daniel could do it, and he, the bottom line of it was there was a great stone cut without hands, it smashed the statue, and it became a mountain to fill the earth, and it became an everlasting kingdom. So this is Daniel's God is the God who has an everlasting kingdom, right? So, okay, it seems like he's he got it. He finally, he got the message. After the fiery furnace incident, he's 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 come around, he's he's regained his sanity. This is, um, he's just giving credit where it's due. And obviously God appreciates those times. <clears throat> I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in my house and flourishing in my palace. He's comfortable and feeling good. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts on my bed and the visions in my head troubled me. Therefore I issued a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. This should sound familiar. It's chapter 2 all over again. Then the magicians, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers came in. I told them the dream, but they did not make known to me its interpretation. It's a little different. He actually told them what it was, but they don't know what it means. But at last, Daniel came before me. His name is Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. Bell, or Baal, right? In him is the spirit of the holy God. Now, this is the New King James Version that capitalizes the word spirit and holy and God. Um, but it probably shouldn't be capitalized. I mean, we, this is how we would understand it, but he wasn't writing it in this way. He was at holy God's plural. Um, but you really can't fault him for that, as we'll see in a second. I'll explain that a little bit. So in, he, there's something different about him. There's a spirit of the holy God or holy God in him, right? Okay. And I told the dream before him, saying, Belteshazzar, Daniel, chief of the magicians. I don't know if you'd appreciate that title. Because I know that the spirit of the holy God, again, spirit, lowercase, holy gods, plural, is in you and no secret troubles you, explain to me the visions of my dream that I have seen and its interpretation. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. So he's going to tell the dream. I was looking and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth. Nope. Right, we've got different, a uh, different uh, prophet sees the same thing or something similar. Ezekiel thirty-one, just interesting. 
in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. Uh, the, what was in preparation, I was reading through this in a different version, and it sounded, I think this one. Uh, the tr- here, in the middle of the earth. There, that's the point. Okay, because that makes me think of something else. The middle of the earth, the midst means the middle, right? Um, why does that matter? Well, we just saw that he's he's writing to all the peoples of the earth somehow. Um, but this tree is in the middle of the earth. I don't know. I, the Middle East is the middle of the earth. You know, Israel's said to be at the center of the earth. And so the earth, quote unquote, that King Nebuchadnezzar is addressing the ones under his command, his kingdom's borders, uh, his audience. And even in this dream, I think, uh, is trying to tell us where to look. In the middle of the earth was this great tree. And it, not the four corners of the earth, right? That expression happens too. Anyway, you get my drift, I think. Its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens, and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Hmm. Okay, so now there's the ends of the earth. It could be seen from the ends of the earth, but it actually exists in the middle. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it. The birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches. And all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the visions of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. Let's pause here. Um, This only occurs two places in the Bible. And Sir and Daniel. The only, in my studies, in my understandings, in my opinions, um, the Enoch is the only possible reference when he says watcher. Because that's what the fallen angels are called who invaded in Genesis chapter 6. In the book of Enoch, that story where it's expanded upon, expounded upon, um, they are called watchers there, and they were evil because they rebelled. They sinned against God. They left their first estate, their first abode, their first habitation. Look at Jude, look at Peter's epistles. Um, But it's just the title that's interesting, isn't it? Similarly, um, well, it's only one place, you know, one chapter in Daniel. What's the big deal? Well, you know the title Son of Man that Jesus constantly applied to himself? That's in one chapter in the book of Daniel, in one book only. Just saying. um, This certainly could be one of those things, one of these nuggets, one of these things to um, gain wisdom from. But it's interesting. So he says there was a watcher, and again, I don't, I don't know what other, other than Enoch, I don't know what the Hebrew reader would be thinking of. Well, technically, it's not even in Hebrew. But um, the days of Daniel, someone who is into this, the Essenes, maybe uh, the Qumran folks, um, right? The what we would call the Second Temple Jews, that time period from actually right after Daniel died, up until the time of Jesus and the Romans, um, that time period, they had Enoch. They read it. And so when they see this, you've got... I'm not sure what it meant to them, but they knew what it was referring to. Okay? 
But then he says, a holy one. So you can say, well, he's repeating himself. He's a watcher, just a term for an angel. But then a holy one is also a term uh, for an angel. Is it just that? Or is it saying a watcher, comma, a holy one, not an evil one? To, to say it's similar in rank or, or whatever, uh, but in loyalty, it's still with God. <clears throat> it's the only way he knows how to describe it, what he saw. All right, there was a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven. And he cried aloud and said thus, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. We have a giant tree. It's filling the earth. It's full of good fruit and shade and everything's it's benefiting. It's feeding everything. But now chop it down and cut off its branches, branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump and roots in the earth. So cut the tree down, but leave the stump at the bottom and leave the roots still in the ground. Bound or bind it with a band of iron and bronze. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Now, again, just putting myself in other people's place, when we read through this, you think this is just a uh um random dream that has nothing to do with anything and wait a minute now we've got multiple references to Daniel 2 and the statue and the fact that as we'll see in a minute this tree is actually referring to Babylon and now we've got iron and bronze keeping it together iron and bronze who are actually the same uh are very much related as we I believe talked about in uh, two weeks ago, go watch that um, message again if you missed it. We went back to Zechariah. We went to, uh, where else? Isaiah, I think. Um, about how these two, most people think are different kingdoms, are actually the same kingdom, just at different points in time. Yavon, iron and bronze. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> here we go. Bound with iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him, in other words, it's not being shaded by the tree anymore. So now it's going to get fed directly from heaven, not by him. Uh, let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts on the grass of the earth. Let his heart. Now, obviously, we're talking about Nebuchadnezzar or, or something, right? It's not a tree anymore. It's saying him. Um. And we'll, Daniel will say this um, specifically in a second, but listen to this. Let, verse 16. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast and let seven times pass over him. Okay, as we see, Daniel 11 and 12 also use this phrase, times. We know from Daniel 11 and 12, and even in Daniel 9, um, the word years is not, for whatever reason, God's reasons, put in here. But this is what times means, okay? The only thing it could mean other than years is months, because days, you can, there's days all over the book. It's not seven days. Maybe periods of indeterminate length, seven of them. <laughs> when it says time times and half a time, we know for a fact from the New Testament that when it says time times and half a time, we know that means three and a half years. So the word times means years. Uh, uh, prophetically, right? Uh, pretty solid, okay? So read it this way. The heart of a beast let seven years pass over him as a beast. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, don't we have chapter 9, verse 27? Daniel, the ruler will make... This is in the... Um, I forget what version. 
the ruler, the king who comes, will make a treaty with the people for a period of one set of seven. Okay. Some, most Bibles say weeks. One week. Period of seven. Uh, Shuva, is that the word? Uh, yeah, okay, years. Seven years pass over him. This decision... No, wait, let's not move here yet. What? Is, look at verse 16. What does this remind you of? Anybody? You know what? I'm going to do the old teacher trick. I'm going out to the students right now. Anyone in the audience right now... Um, what does this remind you of? Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast. Anyone? All right, I'll give you five seconds. You won't be penalized. I'm just, let somebody show their, show their quality here. Shavua, seven years. Thank you, uh, Davis. <clears throat> um okay that's okay all right we've got some we've got some typing going on that's cool antichrist says matt not quite all right uh i think of daniel chapter 7 verse 4 daniel 7 verse 4 gives us a almost identical sentence but in reverse. All right, let's look at it. Oh, using Bible.com, excellent resource. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Now we're going to get to that in a second. I watched till its wings were plucked off and lifted up from the earth and made to stand. So it was a beast. It was a lion. Four great beasts came up from the sea, each different. The first was a lion with eagle's wings. I watched till its wings were plucked off and lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet like a man. And a man's heart was given to it. So here we go. Um, We have a what we're going to demonstrate hopefully in the coming weeks when we get to chapter seven is the Babylonian end time kingdom, the geographic location called the lion. Okay. Uh, with a beast now made to stand on feet like a man and given a man's heart, which is the exact opposite um, of what we see here. Let his heart be changed from a man to a beast. All right. Enough said for now. Um, And of course, we know, we should know, uh, that chapter 7 was written after King Nebuchadnezzar died. So it's not talking about the same thing exactly, right? It's meant, this is what God does. He'll say, look, this is like that. It's like a parable. This is similar to that. So look, learn from this, get wisdom. We all know King Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon, the greatest empire in history up to that point. So file that away. Babylon, the land he controlled, that center of the earth. All right, <clears throat> let's let's move on. Um, no, let's not. It's possible. Pray about this with me. Um, forget exactly last time I went through. Daniel and my devotionals was a few months ago. And um, this stuck out to me for some reason. Now, this is the lion in chapter 7, and what comes after him, obviously right after the sentence we read was, and then there a second beast came, the bear. 
in the chapter uh, verse 16 what we were just reading now this this babylon had a 7 year reign this man this beast uh he turned into a beast for 7 years you know red flashing light number 1 right um we should know that that's what's coming we have a beast kingdom coming for 7 years and it's centered in this center of the earth where these nations are. Babylon, did you, if you didn't know, is on a modern map is Iraq and Syria, basically. Eastern Syria uh, and most of Iraq. So when the final beast emerges, those lands must be a part of it. In fact, if you read Daniel 7, sequentially, it's the first part that rises. Is it possible, because we're all wondering when will the second phase come in? And I know we're skipping ahead for those who are not familiar with this teaching about what our friend Mark would call the four signposts or just Daniel 7 sequential, those four beasts becoming what we see at the end. Um, First the lion, then the bear, then the leopard, then the great and terrible beast, right? Okay, Um, we're waiting on, we all believe, or teaching wise here uh, that the lion has roared. The lion has occurred. It has been fulfilled in our day. Uh, The date of that is uh, debatable among us. Um, To me, it was a matter of, and again, this is just my personal take on it. Um, to me, it was a matter of reverse engineering because we know the beast in the end does have that lion um, centerpiece in the mouth of a lion and it is part of that final beast. Uh, that the final form of that beast, if we believe and we touched on it in chapter two and three, is that it's an Islamic kingdom because that is the Yavan led kingdom of the Ottoman Empire, which is what we called it. Um, is the one that took over for the Yavon of history. And there is no mention of Rome uh, in Daniel's visions. And that's on purpose because God sees it in a different way. Um, So that Yavon kingdom at the end is the one um, with control. And so um, that final beast is a if we believe that is the islamic empire that their term for that is the caliphate okay it's uh, uh, khilafa uh the caliph is the king over the kingdom and the kingdom is called the caliphate in their parlance in ours it's just a kingdom and in the bible prophecy term it's a beast okay um gentile uh, uh enemy of israel enemy of the church it's a beast kingdom um so that's coming so i'm thinking well if it happens in order, it doesn't just happen at once, then the bear, the leopard, and the lion are all caliphates um, in a way. Okay, Muslim kingdoms, Islamic kingdoms. Um, and if that's the case, we did see one rise in the exact location of King Nebuchadnezzar's Babylon in 2014 when ISIS, the Islamic State, declared itself a caliphate. Um, That was seven years ago. So if we can parallel um, these things, if we can say that, yes, the first part to rise is this lion geography, and yes, it will be an Islamic kingdom, and yes, it will start in Iraq and Syria. That's basically what Daniel 7 is going to tell us. And so if this is tied to it, and the language is definitely, um, and when it says you're left as a stump, you're cut totally down, but there's still a stump left, could that be referring, um, obviously, King Nebuchadnezzar himself as an application, but now we're looking forward. Um, Could it be that the lion phase is seven years long? doesn't have to be at all. It's just there. It's just sticking out 
like a thumb to me is right there, uh, tying those verses together and with a, with a time frame on it. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Well, we're going to see here pretty quick because uh, depending on where you start your accounting for the emergence of ISIS, you either have June the 29th, I believe, um, which is when they actually declared the caliphate in Mosul in Iraq. But they had two capitals, remember? There's two wings to this lion. And the second one is in Raqqa, in Syria. That wasn't conquered by them until August, late August. I believe that's right. It's August for sure. Um, sorry, I couldn't verify before I went on tonight. Um, so if... Just keep your eyes open, okay? You do the math. You can calculate that, whatever. It's not important. It's not, okay, it's not thus saith the Lord. But it's something to watch, in my opinion. Um, in June, uh, after June 20, whatever's, you know, in the months of July and August, um, is this time finally up? And when it is up, there's only one, there is no gap in there it's suddenly the bear comes so just keep that in your prayer hopper all right let's proceed finally verse 17 this decision is by the this is still the watcher the holy angel talking to king nebuchadnezzar in his dream this decision is by the decree of the watchers and the there's the term again and the sentence by the word of the holy ones. That may be unique in the whole Bible, that idea that God is uh, decreeing and passing sentence and judgment through holy ones. And even that is a lesson for the masculine, for the end time believers, because we are told that we will judge angels. We are told that we, for example, have governmental authority in the millennium, in the, the kingdom to come, in the world, to the age to come. Uh, even the 12 apostles of the Lamb will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. So decrees and passing judgments, you know, on behalf of God is interesting. Um, and the sentence, by the word of the holy ones, in order that the living may know that the Most High God, or the Most High, rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he will and sets over it the lowest of men. Uh, the Watchers, again, has got to be from Enoch, I'm thinking, um, where it says, in order that the living may know. That's interesting. Does that mean the dead already know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men? I mean, we're kind of told other places that the dead know nothing, but it's just kind of funny and cool that it says that. Um, the Most High rules, uh, it sets over the lowest of men. So the highest authority is given to the lowest of men. This is God's economy, this he loves to do. It's just kind of like David being, right, who is insignificant. His family is the least of the tribe of Judah, and he's the least of his brothers, that type of stuff. And even... Even what Jesus commands us to do in the Sermon on the Mount, to become lowly, to become humble, to become you know, willing to be persecuted, to become willing to be struck and not answer, not revile in return, uh, answer evil for evil, etc., 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 right? Okay, verse 18. <clears throat> Whoa. This dream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now you, Belteshazzar, Daniel, declare its interpretation. Since all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy God is in you. Uh, I said I would touch on that, that holy God versus holy gods thing. Uh, we know there are gods of the nations. All right, this is going to be real quick, guys. Um, again, others have done work on this, Michael Heiser, etc. Um, there are gods of the nations, plural. They're not fake. I mean, they are they really exist. They're not God, God, but they are principalities assigned over the nations of men, 70 nations. Um, 
and most of them just went bad, okay? Uh, we see this in other books, in Deuteronomy, in, in the Psalms, etc., um, that God is now passing judgment on the principalities, and we see these exact principalities over these exact lands, one in Persia and one in Yavon, fighting each other in Daniel chapter 10. So when he says the holy gods, he's saying that there's more than one in his understanding. And that's why he calls Daniel's God the most high, like God of gods. Because there's or Elohim of Elohim, you could say in Hebrew. Uh, because he knows that's, that's kind of how it is. And that is how God set it up, right? When he says, I've come to judge the gods of the Egyptians, when I, right? It's, it's just, it's a fact that we really can't just ignore. Um, it's there again for a reason, and uh, David is is making excellent points in the chat in time church chat. Divine counsel is the name that right is often assigned to that. That's correct. Um, and small g gods Elohim and Elohim is plural, right? El or Eloi is one thing, but Elohim is more than one of them. Free Hebrew lesson for the day there. If you didn't know that. Uh, I'm sure all of you did, actually, because you're really smart and clued in. Um, okay, so Daniel, explain this to me. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for a time. Does that mean for a year? I don't know. Um, was astonished for a time, and his thoughts troubled him. So the king spoke, well, probably not for a year, uh, but he's saying, why aren't you answering me. The king spoke, Belteshazzar, do not let the dream or its interpretation trouble you. Belteshazzar, Daniel answered and said, my lord, may the dream concern those who hate you, and its interpretation can turn your enemies. So he's saying, it's not good news for you. Don't blame me when I'm about to tell you, because it doesn't look good for you. The tree that you saw, which grew and became strong, Uh, whose height reached to the heavens and which could be seen by all the earth, whose leaves were lovely and its fruit abundant, in which was food for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt and in whose branches the birds of the heaven had their home. It is you, O king, who have grown and become strong, for your greatness has grown and reached and reaches to the heavens and your dominion to the end of the earth. Or the earth is, they knew it, right? Um, It's very similar to the statue, the image dream of chapter two, where he says, you are this head of gold, O king Nebuchadnezzar. So this is, you are the great tree. 23. And inasmuch as the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming, or a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave its stump and roots of the earth bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field. Let it be wet with the dew of heaven and let him graze with the beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High. So Daniel is taking up the decreeing now, repeating it, of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King. They shall drive you from men. They? They? The Watchers? Um, angels? The Watchers made the decree, and here's the decree. They shall drive you from men. I don't know. Probably not important. Uh, they shall drive you from men for your... Your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. They shall wet you with the dew. They shall wet you with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over you till you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomever He chooses. And inasmuch as they gave the command to leave the stump and roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be assured to you after. You come to know that heaven rules. In other words, you don't. Therefore, O king, let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Um, 
Let's review that real quick. What did I miss? Um, again, Ezekiel 31, for reference, there is also a, a um, vision or parable of Babylon being a great tree. Um, the dominion to the end of the earth, that's Daniel 7, verse 23. Um and the, again, the band of iron and bronze, what held Babylon together, even in the time of the end? Yavan and the caliphate, maybe, the final version of it, surrounding Babylon like a band surrounding the nation of Babylon from the north, the east, and the west. Now, just saying, I don't know. Um, and then again, they shall drive you. They shall do this. You shall come to know that heaven rules. Break off your sins. Repent of your sins. Get this out of your head because apparently it's you're not done being boastful and prideful and thinking you're all that. After all of this, after all of this. And here's Nebuchadnezzar's uh, response to end the chapter. All this came upon... King Nebuchadnezzar, at the end of the 12 months. So he thought about this for a year. Seems like a one-year warning he was given in the dream. A one-year warning. By the way, um, that again is possibly relevant uh, in that we saw one year ago a warning about the Iranian invasion coming to Babylon, the Persians of the end times. Um, remember we had that little night or two that seemed like this could be it, and we got a major rocket attack coming from, you know, missiles are coming from Iran proper. Remember that? Um, I should have did this before we went on, but... You remember that date? Um, that was the, the Solomayani, right? Remember he was killed? Uh, and then they would strike back later. Here it is, July the 8th. July the 8th. Um... So again, we have the time period we're in now, which is between you know July and August. Um, do we have a one-year warning of the end of Babylon, the geographic uh, Babylon Caliphate? In other words, it's time for the next phase. Again, I don't know. I'm not proclaiming. God did not say, thus saith the Lord. Um, it's just notes along the way to be um, on guard, okay? All right, here we go. Twelve months he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, saying, Is this not great Babylon or Babylon the Great? There's Revelation 17 and 18. Uh, that I have built for a royal dwelling by my my, my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. So he's blowing it, dude. He's blowing it. So I had to block someone who was saying some crazy stuff. And YouTube, like every week, YouTube seems to attract the crazies. Um, Sorry. Built Babylon the Great. I have built this royal dwelling for my mighty power for the honor of my majesty. He's not casting away this scene that Daniel told him to. Because what happens? While the word was still in the king's mouth of him saying this, me, 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 a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men. And your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen and seven times. Seven years shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour, 
the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown in eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Daniel 7 is back. Okay, uh, right, we have a lion representing Babylon with eagle's wings. Again, um, and the beast, the heart, and the man, and all that, it's not random, right? It seems like, boy, this is just a bunch of crazy visions all slapped in the same book. That's what it seems like to most folks. Um, but it's not. Um, hang on, before we move on. Um, I have a note here. Seven times shall pass over you till you know the most high rules. Eat grass like oxen. See, Jeremiah 28, 14. Why did I say that? Let's take a look. Jeremiah 28, 14. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron on the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve, and they shall serve him. I have given him to the beasts of the field also. Okay, well, that's an interesting note. Nebuchadnezzar given to the beasts of the field. Um, okay. Um, Lion with eagle's wings, seven times. All right, verse 34. And at the end of the time, the times spent out there, seven years, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my understanding returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. Here's the, what's understanding? Remember, this is the masculine, those who understand. Those who understand what Israel's ought to do understanding the times, is what? His dominion is everlasting. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. His kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the army of heaven. Uh, in the army of heaven is angels, um, number one. And number two, this also makes me think of Daniel chapter 8. Uh, when the little horn, actually, it says, uh, elevates himself to the prince of the armies of heaven and casts down some of the heavenly host. <clears throat> he does according to his will. And among the habits of the earth, no one can restrain his hand or say to him, what have you done? Right? No one's going to check God. Um, this is just a real important lesson to take home generally in 2021, regardless of all the prophetic stuff, which is don't believe anyone who ever tells you that some man or system or party or um, election can stop the will of God. No one can restrain his hand. God's will is going to happen. No man can stop it. No group. No movement. No conspiracy. No angel. Nothing can stop his decrees. The King Nebuchadnezzar um, was the most powerful man in the world. And God's like, nah, get out. You're out of here. You're out of a job for seven years. You're going to. You become you're losing your mind. You're going to go act like a actual animal. 
You're no better than an animal to me. Compared to God, we are. Right? Pretty simple. Especially if we're not in his will, if we're if we're full of pride and arrogance and thinking we can do this or that and we can thwart God. Nobody can thwart God's plan, guys. Okay? Seems basic, but and it is basic. But sometimes we fall into the trap, don't we? Oh boy, this doesn't happen if this person doesn't get into office or this party doesn't do that or this movement does this, then oh <laughs> why are we thinking like that? All right. At the same time my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my honor and splendor returned to me when he admitted the truth. My counselors and nobles restored to me. I was restored to my kingdom. An excellent majesty was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, now I praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all of whose works are truth and his ways justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. Those are the that's the last words of chapter four and the last words of King Nebuchadnezzar uh, recorded. Um, so you could say he was saved, basically. Um, I mean, then again, he said this like three times now. Oh, oh, God, the God of Daniel is really great. No, he's really, really great. No, he's the best. Yeah, yeah. Until a little while later. Um, but this is the point. And in fact, this this phrase. Um, I think Job 40 is exactly what I'm thinking of. Remember Leviathan? Um, um, we did a study on Leviathan and Behemoth here a month or two ago. Um, and one of those exhortations to Leviathan is, you are king over all the sons of pride. Leviathan is the beast from the sea. And the beast from the sea is exactly what we've been talking about this whole chapter. The government, the one world government now, the Middle Eastern government, the, the Islamic kingdom that comes from the sea to surround Israel. Because that's what Satan cares about. Um, that's what we're talking about. And those are the sons of pride. This is who uh, Leviathan will work in in those final kings, in those kingdoms at the end, with Babylon, the lion, and Persia, Iran, the bear, and Yavon, Turkey, the leopard. And when you combine all of them, not every country in the world, if you have one country that used to be Turkey, Iran, and Iraq, and Syria, if they get together and are one country now, now we're cooking, okay? Until Now we can say prophecy is here. This is the end times. We only got seven years left because here we go. We're going to make a seven-year covenant with death in the grave next. Okay, okay, but we're not there. So the, don't be distracted, okay? Uh, don't be put off by... Um, Things that aren't true. You know, don't look for... Uh, today, I just kind of stepped in it with somebody else about a new world order, and it's not a worldwide government that we're looking for. Because we're not. It's not what the Bible says. And so those kind of distractions, you know, or the kind of distractions that say, oh, God's plan is going to be thwarted by a particular election results, um, or whatever. We're not going to be ready. We're not going to be those wise virgins if we're distracted. By the stuff. Um, stick to the word of God. Amen. Um, okay. Next week, I think, we'll do chapter five, which is his son or possibly grandson and the end of Babylon in history. All right. Do we have any questions, comments, or concerns? Hmm. All right. <clears throat> oh boy, got a whole whole lot of action happening at the Anton Church page. Go over there, guys. YouTube and and Facebook friends, it's much better on our website. Uh, 
Isaac and David becoming friends. Yes, absolutely. You should. You guys are awesome. The attack on the U.S. base. Christian said yes. We mentioned that before. Uh, Psalm 82, 6. Uh, uh, that's the, uh, talking about the Elohim and, and the punishment that, um, God is bringing to them because they're not doing right and just by the human beings of the nations they're supposed to be um, watching over, hence watchers. Um, Uh, okay. Yeah, I hate humidity too. Okay, sorry, we're cutting to the weather there. Um, right, Sonia. Yes, Sonia got it right. She was talking about Daniel 7 when we uh, referenced that other, that question earlier. Because I didn't give folks enough time. Um, Isaac said at some point, Ezekiel 4 and Numbers 14. I'm sorry, what was that in reference to? That's That's what I'm looking at there. Brother Isaac, if you're still on the case, let me know, please. I'd like to know your wisdom on that. Um, hello, Gloria. Welcome, welcome. And Adam says, I took the jab. wonder if it's going to kill me. Probably won't. I got two of them. Alive and well. Uh, Lord willing, right? All right. So if there's no questions, we'll wrap it up because we t- I, this is went longer than I thought it would. So I apologize for that. Um, it, even off topic, that's okay. If there's something burning on your mind, we can do that as well. Um, and if Isaac wants to clarify his statements, that's cool. If not, that's cool also. He knows how to get me. All right, friends. Uh, this has been Entine Church, Christopher Manti, and friends. Um, y'all are my friends. Thank you for uh, sticking with the ministry. If you've given to us at any point, bless you. Um, and it's not going to be an easy road, friends. Uh, it's just not. There have been, there's more than one uh, incident um, where we think we have ministry partners and and friends out in different parts of uh, the body who are cooperating and love what we're doing and are sharing and partnering. And all of a sudden there's not, they're gone. And uh, some of them are not just gone. Some of them are poo pooing. Say, don't listen to them at all. Don't be involved. That is just a really tough situation. Okay. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but thanks for being one who doesn't care about all that stuff. All right. Um, Love you. Yes, let's continue to pray um, for our, obviously, an intercession for our family here at End Time Church and our various churches that we're serving in throughout the world. Hopefully you are serving the body in some capacity because you are saved to serve. We're not saved to study necessarily, okay? We're definitely not. He wants us out there uh, witnessing to serve the body of Christ, to serve the lost, by loving them, giving them the gospel. Um, and yes, and being informed, of course, gathering wisdom. Yes, being those wise virgins that will have enough oil to last the night. That is the point of all this. And I think the point of Daniel uh, in general. Um, as long as Jeff says, as long as the current Ayatollah lives, we twiddle our thumbs. Perhaps. Perhaps, and that could, that could be any day, right? This guy has been near death a couple of times. So, again, it's all in God's hands. He raises kings. He he brings them down, Nebuchadnezzar, and all the way up to today. Um, at any at any point, we'll be we'll be rolling. Um, um who is this? Uh, Elrin Strong Sword. That's, sorry, that's a long name. In 1976, the Knesset banned prayer on the Temple Mount. Year 686, mosque was finished. Uh, twelve? No, no, no. 1290. Okay. I, I know what you're getting at. No. Okay. It's not that complicated. 
Hey, first of all, we agree that you banning prayer anywhere is stupid. Uh, the Temple Mount, you're not going to ban ban anyone's prayers. It, we, I prayed on the Temple Mount. I did that. Okay, sorry, guilty. Um, and those who were with me did that. Uh, but uh, I know it applies to the Jews and the whole situation. Israel messed up by giving Jordan the uh, authority to overrule them and to give the authority over to the walk of the Jordanians over the Temple Mount. That's why it's unsettled to this point. And by the way, the, only when we see that situation changed, which is Jordanian control of the Temple Mount, it doesn't matter what anyone does or says or claims or writes about, or shares in a meme, or tries to promote. There is, will be no third temple. There will be no covenant with the Antichrist. There will be no of those end time events if Jordan still controls the Temple Mount. If the status quo remains with that, I don't care what treaty Israel makes with Qatar, or the UAE, or, or Saudi Arabia, doesn't matter. Those are not the nations in question, right? The final status of Jerusalem, the Temple Mount situation, has to be changed. The Temple will only occur once the Jordanian control is finished. Or they explicitly agree. Yes, build a Temple here. It'll be for everyone. Jews are no problem. We are not there, Okay. So just keep that in mind. This is, it's the real world here. Prophecy is not some kind of fancy, you know, cloud cuckoo land. Um, it's the real world with real souls at stake. Um, so just keep that in mind, please. I don't know why, who needed to hear that, but whatever. So, ba, 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 ba. Uh, somebody amen me for something. Thank you. Um, after party. No, sorry, Jeff. I'm not, I'm not prepared to do that tonight and I don't have help. So I apologize, but not tonight. Right. All right, guys, that's it. Praise the Lord. I uh, love you so much. This has been end time church. We value your prayers. We value your support in every way, every way, every way. Uh, let's be the body of Christ. Father, bless us as we go. Keep us keep us strong in the power of your might. Even though we are weak, you are strong. Your grace is sufficient. And we love you. And we want to love you. We want to cry for you. And we want to have our hearts filled when your heart is filled. And you're broken when your heart is broken. And in the end, may the gospel come to Israel where it began so we can say from there come Lord Jesus and you do thank you Lord in Yeshua's name friends we love you so much thank you till next time God willing next Monday night uh, here at end time church God bless y'all